Sol Waita Omnes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We continue our coverage of Caesar's Gallic Wars. We're almost finished with the section for book four. Um, just a couple of sections left there, and then um, we'll move on to book five after that. So, um, when we just finished um, last time, Caesar had arrived at um, some of his men who were under attack. They had been harvesting grain in, um, in a particular area away from the camp. More dust than usual was seen, and so they uh, decided to go investigate. And when he got there, he sees a whole lot of the enemy has surrounded them. And they're causing a whole lot of confusion because of the ways that they use their cavalry and their chariots. And then in 33, he talks about... The, the the way that the Britons fight with chariots, which is not going to be the way the Romans fight. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't need to spend an entire paragraph. Everybody knows how Romans fight. So, uh, we pick up in 34, and we're going to... Uh, we're going to save the day because we're Caesar. So, let's dive right into it. Quibus rebus perturbatis nostris, noitate pugnae, tempore opportunissimo, caesar auxilium tulit. Namque us adventuos des constiterunt nostri, se ex timore recaperunt. Wow, Caesar. Well done. Um, so, quibus rebus perturbatis nostris, ablative absolute there. With our men disturbed by these matters, by these affairs, by these things. Basically everything up above. And then we get this. Uh, this is in brackets on the Latin library. Um, I don't know if it's in brackets in the textbook. If it is, it's just an apposition. So, by these things. Well, what exactly are they perturbed by? By the novelty, by the newness of this fight. Um, or of this kind of like fighting technique. Pugna here really referring almost more to the technique than anything else. So with our men disturbed by these things, that is the novelty of their fighting method, tempore opportunissimo, not an ablative absolute, um, this is ablative of time when, at the most opportune time, at the most perfect time, Caesar brought help. Wow, Caesar. Landed on a little bit thick there. Um, again, I enjoy Caesar, but boy, does he know how to uh, to spin a yarn to make himself look really good. Namque eus adventu ostes constiterunt. Four. Um, eus adventu, again, ablative of, you could almost say ablative of time when, or it's more like an ablative of cause. At his arrival... Um, so ablative ad went to going with uh, then controlled by Aeus, right? At the arrival of him, that is Caesar. So at his arrival, the enemy stopped. Our men recovered themselves, or just simply recovered from fear. So Caesar appears on the scene, and like you know, a superhero, he's got the sunshine and waterfalls behind him, and um clearly this just light shines down from heaven to illuminate him the enemy is like oh no it's caesar and the men the romans are like it's caesar um it's i i would be too embarrassed to write this about myself even if this is how it happened i would be too embarrassed to write uh write this about myself Quo facto, ad lacessendum ostem et comitendum prolium alienum es a tempus arbitratus Suo se loco continuit et brevet tempor intermiso in castra legiones reduxit. All right. So, quo facto, with this done. So that is, with the enemy having stopped and with our men having recovered themselves. Again, ablative absolute. Caesar loves his ablative absolutes. So, with this thing done, with this basically having happened, odd plus a gerundive, um... I'll say it's show purpose. You get lacessendum ostem et comitendum prolium. So we get this long, odd, plus a gerundive phrase going on. So to, like, attack the enemy and to commit battle, to, to engage in battle. Um, 
to do those things, alienum esse tempus arbitratus, uh, arbitratus deponent participle, having judged or having thought that, um, and I'm going to translate this a little bit differently than the way it is in the Latin, literally, having thought that it was not the time to attack the enemy and to begin battle. So literally, he what this says is, having judged, having thought that the time was different to attacking the battle. So there is a time to attack the battle, but it is another time. Um, alienum here just meaning another or a different, right? An alien is somebody from a different place. So having thought that the time was different um, to attack the enemy, he contained his men. He kind of held his men in their spot or i guess kind of like he held him literally more like he held himself in his spot it is singular so um kind of like he's he kind of contained everything he doesn't advance right so he kind of what's the word i'm looking for withholds his men um holds them back there's got to be some term that i should use but i can't think of what it is um yeah he contained his men and Ablative absolute with a brief time kind of having lapsed with a with a brief time uh, interjected, he led his legions back. Ray Dukes it. He led his legions back into the camp. So, um, so I guess th this seems to be the way I take this is basically he kind of stares down the enemy. Um, he he's like, okay, we should want to attack them there. So nobody advance. Everybody just. Stay back, stay back. Okay, let's go back to the camp. And then he just goes. Um, so yeah, so he holds a, you know, kind of stays in his spot. And with a brief time having elapsed, he leads his legions back to the camp. So it's just like he just kind of stands there and stares at the uh, the enemy uh, until he can return home. Okay. Dum haec geruntor, nostris omnibus occupatis, quirant in agris reliqui discesserunt. All right, doom hike Garuntor is another, it, it's basically an ablative absolute, but it's just phrased a little bit different, differently, right? We get quo facto here with this thing done. Doom hike Garuntor, with these things being done. Um, do we head up here as well, right? Doom ea Garuntor. Basically, it's, there's no present passive participle. Um, and so if you want to do like a present passive kind of idea with these things being done, um, you have to make it an actual verb. So while these things are being done, then I think we have another ablative absolute here. Nostris omnibus occupatis. With all of our men occupied, that is busy, those who were in the fields, those who... Yeah, and this, this offers some confusion here. Those who were in the fields, or perhaps those who had, like, remained in the fields... Um, departed. Um, and I think your the notes that Mueller suggests are that this is referring to the enemy. So the Romans return back to the camp, um, and they are busy with other things. Um, and then those who had been left behind in the fields, that is the enemy, because they didn't pursue them, right? They departed. They're like, oh, the Romans aren't here to fight? Uh, I guess we'll just go home then. Uh, all right, everybody back to your houses. So um, I, I think that's how Muller tends to take it, um, which makes sense because Caesar takes all of his men back to the camp, right? So it would be weird if, like, like with all of our men busy, those of our men who were left in the fields, it's like, well, why did he leave people back behind in the fields? Um, so uh, this is probably referring to the enemies, the enemies who had been abandoned in the fields because we're not fighting them. They depart. Secutai sunt continuos complores dies tempestates, quae et nostros incatris continerent, et ostem a pugna prohiberent. So, there followed several, several continuous days, stormy ones. So, there are uh, several continuous days. Ooh. Sorry. I did that wrong, because continuous is an accusative, uh, and I should know better. Also, 
they're masculine and Sukutai is feminine. So let me fix my terrible translation. Storms, tempestates. Storms followed for an accusative of duration of time. They followed for several continuous days. That is how that grammatically goes together. Um, so tempestates is your subject going with sekutai soon. Continuous complures dies is an accusative of duration of time. Several continuous days. The storms which... And then we get this weirdly placed et, so we have two ets here, which both contained our men in the camps and prohibited the enemy or kept the attendant kept the enemy from an attack or from a fight. So the enemy would like to attack us, but they can't because they're storms, and it's not good to fight in storms. Heavy rain and mud and whatnot is not conducive to uh, to battle. Meanwhile presumably during these storms, barbari nuntios in omnes partes demiserunt, pacitatem quod nos rorum militum suis predicaverunt, et quanta praeda facienda, atque in perpetuum sibi liberandi facultas deretur, si Romanos castris expulisent, demonstraverunt. So, meanwhile, the barbarians did a couple of things. They sent messengers into all parts, into all regions, into all parts of Britain, right? And, um, quet. And they mentioned, they told their men, they told their fellow Britons, uh, dative here is the indirect object of Pradikawerud, they announced to their men or to their comrades the paucity of our soldiers, the small number of our soldiers. And we go all the way down here to demonstrate where went for our verb. And they demonstrated or kind of pointed out. Um, and it, do I want an indirect question here? Yeah. They pointed out how much plunder. I guess. Mm, mm, no. Nah. They, they pointed out how great of an opportunity. I'm going to go this way. How great an opportunity of making plunder, fucking die pride of making plunder, and how great an opportunity of freeing themselves forever was given or would be given if they expelled the Romans from the camps. So it's not good to fight, but we can at least send some messengers to announce to the the people in the more remote areas. Hey. If if we expel the Romans from the camps, uh, well, first of all, it's kind of like, hey, they don't have a whole lot of soldiers. They've only got, like, a legion or two as opposed to, like, six or seven or whatever, right? So they don't have, like, thousands upon thousands of men. They have just, like, a single group of thousands. Um, so if we expel the Romans from the camps, the, a great opportunity is given for making plunder, for creating spoils, and for freeing ourselves into perpetuity, uh, forever. Facultas, nominative, singular of a third declension. Pridae, faciendae, genitive of a gerundive clause, um, describing what sort of opportunity. An opportunity of plunder being made, and an opportunity of themselves being liberated. He cerebus calerter magna multitudine peritatis equitatis qua coacta ad castra at venerunt. Um, what do I want to say? Parsible. So just like with these things, because of these things, he cerebus. Um, just kind of ablative of cause, like because of these things. Um, a great. Well, let me think. I want magna multitudine to be ablative. Um, make this an ablative clause here. With a great multitude of foot soldiers and cavalry brought together. Uh, Peditatus equitatus, fourth declension nouns in the genitive singular. And these are going to be uh, an ablative. With a great multitude of foot soldiers and cavalry gathered, brought together, co-octed, 
uh, they came to the camp. So, um, and Coacta perhaps could be being governed by Hisrebus with a great multitude of cavalry and um, of cavalry and foot soldiers brought together because of these things. Um, they quickly came to the camp. Or quickly gathered, they came to the camp. Calariter, more likely going with Coacta since it's closer to Coacta. So, so all right, Britons are, they're going to attack the Romans um, literally come hell or high water since it is raining quite a bit. But, Caesar 35. Oh, look, more Etsy. Caesar et si dem quod superioribus debus acideret fori videbat, ut, si essent hostes pulsi caleritate periculum et fugerent, tamen noctus equites circiter triginta quos comeas acibus, de quo ante dictum est, secum transportaurat legiones in ace pro castris constituit. So, Caesar does something. Even if, um, he, even if he saw that, the same thing would be, or in this case would happen, again, for a future active infinitive of the verb to be. So even if he saw that the same thing would happen, which had happened on previous days, ablative of time when, Namely that, so this is kind of the result clause in apposition to fora, the same thing would happen. Well, what would happen? Well, you'd have the result that um, the enemy, Jose is going in, in both of these clauses, basically that they would flee the danger with speed if they were repelled, if they were kind of resisted, if they were pushed back. So if the enemy were pushed back, they would flee the danger with speed. So, Caesar knows that in the past, when the Britons will fight, but as soon as they lose the advantage, they will retreat, um, live to fight another day, as it were. So, even if he knew this would happen, even if he kind of saw what had happened on previous days and saw that that would happen again, nevertheless... Um, having, uh, Noctis, I think having, like, gathered or uh, arranged, I actually don't remember what that word means. I think it's arranged. Having, like, gathered around 30 cavalrymen, around 30 knights, equites. Um, 30 knights, which, uh, accusative as the, going back to equites, it's masculine plural going with equites, knights. Um, but it is accusative in its clause, right? Which, comius atribus de quo ante dictum est, about whom it has been mentioned before. And we saw Comius Atribus, right? He was the one who was attacked or captured by the Britons when he came over as a messenger. So having uh, gathered the horsemen, the around 30 horsemen, which Comius Atribus had transported with himself or brought over with him, um, he arranged his legions in a battle line in front of the camp. So... All right, yeah, they're going to, we're, we're going to attack them, or they're going to attack us, we're going to resist, we're going to start pushing them back, and then they're going to run. Um, but I've got cavalry with me, and that's going to help, theoretically. All right. Comiso proelio, diutius nostro militum impetum hostes ferre, non potuerunt, ac terga verterunt. So, with the battle begun, ablative absolute, um, for a longer time, du means for a long time, duteus is the comparative of that, so for a longer time, or pr almost perhaps for too long a time, um, the, um, but for, for too long a time, or for a, a, a longer time, the enemy was not able to bear to withstand, to endure the attack of our soldiers. So ferre meaning to bring or carry. It can mean that in a physical sense, right? I am bearing a cup. Uh, but it can also mean in a more metaphorical sort of sense um, to, to endure, perhaps. So they could not bear or withstand the attack. And they turned their backs. So they fled. All right. 
All right. Quos tanto spatio secuti quantum cursu et viribus et ficer potu erant, cum pluris ex eis ociderunt, or eis, ociderunt, ociderunt, de in de omnibus longe la tequa de ficis in censis, se in castra recepirunt. So the enemy was not able to withstand the attack, and they turned. They turned tail and ran. The enemies, which, having pursued which, um, Sicuti referring to the Romans, quos referring to the enemy, having pursued them for as great of a distance, tanto spatio, quantum, as great of a distance as they were able to accomplish in their running and their strength. So that is what that literally says. Um, having followed them for as great of a distance, or for so great a distance, how great of a distance, um, our men were able to kind of carry out in their course and their strength. That's what that literally says. A more, ac a, a more natural sounding translation is, having followed them for as far as they could. Um, based And Kursu, again, is based kind of this... Kursu is perhaps referring to the almost the, the terrain. So as far as their running could take them. So we can only follow them when they're, where there's roads on horses, right? So if they're fleeing by horseback, or if they're chasing them on horseback you know maybe the horses can't weave through the trees as well as the the britons can on foot so they follow them as far as their course would let them um and as as far as their strength would let them so maybe they're going to get tired all right so having pursued them for as great of a distance as they were able to carry out in their course and their strength they killed several of them, or several from them. And then, with all of the buildings, far and wide, burned down, they returned themselves, they received themselves, so they returned into the camp. So the Romans pursue them as far as they can, they kill several of them um, in this pursuit, and then... Burning their buildings far and wide, they return to the camp. Okay. So, Rome getting the upper hand once again. All right. And then we get the first sentence of 36. Um, and this is the last little bit. Eodem die legate ab hostibus misi ad caesarem de pace venerunt. So, on that same day. Lead or uh, legates, emissaries from the enemies having been sent or sent by the enemies to Caesar concerning peace arrived. And you can arrange those clauses however you want, right? I just took it literally word by word. On the same day, messengers having been sent by the enemy or sent from the enemy came to Caesar concerning peace. So, oh, right, uh, we tried to we tried to defeat you a second time under questionable circumstances. We're sorry. Will you forgive us? Um, and Caesar kind of will, but we actually, uh, just glancing ahead, right? Uh, Caesar doubled the number of hostages which he had demanded earlier. So originally he's like, look, send me 400 kind of prisoners of war and we'll call it good. Now he's like 800. And if you do it again, I'm going to mess you up. So, well done, Caesar. You have saved um, Britain from themselves. So, there we go. That finishes book four, um, at least as far as the Latin is concerned. Um, Caesar does not spend much more time in Britain. He kind of, like, proves his point. Um, but winter is coming on, and so he goes back to the continent, goes back to the mainland of Gaul uh, to spend the winter there, as we discussed Um earlier where was it yeah they decided they were going to you know winter in gaul so that's what we get up above um so yeah we go into book five and caesar's gonna find himself in a tight spot again well 
at least people related to Caesar are going to find themselves in a tight spot. Book five, I enjoy, I particularly enjoy towards the end of book five. Book five contains some ears. If you like good leadership, book five is not for you. Um, at least the first half of what we read in book five. It gets very frustrating with uh, with some of our characters. But it's actually quite an, uh, an entertaining read, I think. So uh, I hope that you all are looking forward to that. Uh, with that said, um, I'm going to call it for there um, for the day. We'll take a look at book five. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it. I may look at some of it next week. We'll see. Um, I might be taking some of next week off from from work. We'll see. We'll see. Um, anyway, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, email me, or hit me up in class. Um, if you're new to the channel or not one of my students, then definitely comment, like, and subscribe, unless you're just telling me to go to, like, onlinegirls.com or something. Don't comment that. That's stupid. Don't give me spam. Give me real comments in the chat. Like, comment, subscribe, click that bell, all of the YouTube things. Uh, and with that, I will see you next time. Wall later.